Hello everybody, those who have been watching the channel for some time will know that here at JM on Cars I always try and adhere to the highest technical standards. Unfortunately, every now and again something gets in the way which means I can't deliver a video that's as good as I hoped it would be. In some cases I can often go back and redo what it was that I'm not happy with. On occasion I simply don't release the video at all. But today's car was something that was so good and so special I needed to bring you this video. Unfortunately, whilst filming the drive-bys for this video, the car developed a small technical problem that meant we were unable to continue. And because its owner lives about 600 miles away from me, refilming the section we needed was simply impossible. So I had to draw my many years of film and TV experience to be able to deliver a finished video. Some eagle-eyed viewers may be able to notice what it is that we've done in order to generate the missing footage. And I wanted to acknowledge that ahead of the video before you popped into the comment section and thought that something was wrong. I hope that this does not detract from your enjoyment of today's video. JM on Cars is sponsored by Car Vertical. With just a registration number, or even better, a VIN, Car Vertical will search over 20 European databases to find out whether any car you're looking at has a hidden past. They can see if a vehicle was used as a taxi, stolen, suffered fire damage, or involved in a crash, even when it wasn't written off, so could pass other checks. Car Vertical is now an essential tool in my car buying kit, putting all the information I need to know together in one easy to read report. Even better, if you follow the link in the description down below, you'll get 10% off. A big thank you to them for being today's sponsor. Hello everybody. Have you ever looked at one of those two million dollar singers or one of Magnus Walker's 911s and thought, bet I can do that cheaper? Well, that's what today's car is all about. This is the prized possession of its kind owner, John, who's driven it down for me to have a little bit of a go in it. This is not yet the finished article, it is a work in progress, but what a work in progress it is. As you can probably guess, quite a lot has gone into constructing this car, so to talk you through it, I shall hand you over to voiceover James. The basis of this car is a 3 litre 911 SC. He chose the 3 litre as a base instead of the 3.2 because he was told it can be a more durable lump and revs a little easier than the larger engine. The car was purchased having already had some work done but it was stripped down to the bare metal and media blasted just to be sure. It got new sills and kidney bowls, common issues on older 911s and had the sunroof removed at the same time. To give it the classic sporting 911 look, a ducktail spoiler was fitted along with lightweight bumpers and bonnet. The colour chosen was classic Grand Prix white. A full cage was installed and colour coded to the exterior along with period correct Cobra seats trimmed with John's own family tartan. The engine was stripped and rebuilt with CP Gorilla pistons, a twin plug XDI ignition system, PTO carbs, a GT3 oil pump and the gearbox was also rebuilt and upgraded at the same time. This is operated by a very tasty looking Wevo gate shifter with a short shift kit. The exhaust is an RS style item, the suspension is KWV3 and the car is wearing original Fuchs wheels. Thank you voiceover James. And now I'm going to tell you what all of that work has done to this car. One thing to note, although the engine will make about 270 horsepower, it is still within its sort of running in phase, so I'm not using all of the available RPM. However, that shouldn't really stop me from getting the full experience. One thing I have to say is that I've driven a few of this kind of car and they're not always that friendly to drive. When you look at something like this which has a, a full cage and such a stripped interior, my instant assumption is that it's going to be very unfriendly indeed. But actually, nothing can be further from the truth here. This is a really nice car to drive. It's currently actually quite well damped. Steering, once you're above parking speeds, nice and light. Engine, quite responsive, not massively potent, but we shall work a little bit more as it warms through and I use a few more of the available RPMs. I can take it down to about five and a half and the red line is really only just over six. So I'm not missing out on masses of the experience. And I generally find with these older cars, you don't always need to rev them out. In case you are wondering just how much it costs to have a car like this, well, it would be very difficult for me to tell you because there is nothing else out there quite like this one. It really is a one-off. The nearest thing I can tell you is how much it would cost me if I were to destroy this car on the test drive. 
And that's £135,000. That's a figure that was arrived at by independent inspectors who looked at all the materials went into the build, the time, the effort, the quality, the workmanship, all of that stuff. So this really is a fine thing. And although once upon a time, £135,000 would have got you into an extraordinarily nice example of a 911, doesn't really go that far these days. I'm about to drive after this a 991.2 GT3, and those would be about 15 to 20 grand more than this. I've often extolled the virtues of older cars, which aren't really as outright fast as their modern counterparts, but just have that real involvement, that feel, that zing that some of the modern stuff really does lack. So, let's see then, shall we, how fun this is when you're pressing on. Throttle response is so good. Let's give you a little bit of third gear. In terms of outright pace, I'd say it's roughly equivalent, really, to the 3.4 litre 996 I drove this morning. It's not insanely quick. With some more miles on it and another service, I'm sure the engine will open up and feel a little bit keener to rev, but this sort of thing's never really about straight line performance. So how is it in the bends? Well, <laughs> progress this is a hell of a thing there are some issues with it this gearbox when you get it right is wonderful but it feels like third and fourth are just slightly misaligned so you think you're getting them and actually you're sitting somewhere between third and fifth so a little bit tricky however steering full of feel this car feels very similar to the 3.2 Carrera Club Sport that I drove last year and I should say a huge thank you to George and Caitlin from Region 2 of the Porsche Club of Great Britain who have invited me to drive this and several other fine examples of Stuttgartian sports car. Oh, it moves a lot, this car. It's really quite soft, very nicely damped. I hope when John finishes this car off, he doesn't sort of suffer the temptation to make it too hardcore because as it is, as a road car, this thing's sensational. The gearbox, once you work out where all the gears are, it's really quite nice. And it's never a given for old 911s either. That, just doing that, could do that all day long. Got to be careful because the rev limit, but oh, it's magic, this thing. Wouldn't want to spend too much time in it on the motorway. And I'm, I'm not a big fan of the full cage. I don't like full cages in road cars. I think they're a bit dangerous. Clutch is actually really friendly. Brakes are great too, they're more or less original. Very nice, very docile. These can often be cammy, snatchy, really unpleasant little so-and-sos when you're just moving along at normal speeds, but this is really quite nice. No talk to speak of really low down. The thing does thrive on revs, so that's a little bit of a shame. Some of the later cars are a bit talky, but the air-cooled ones never really were, especially when you start tuning them. That's the first thing that tends to go is all, all of the torque. Driving this thing through these hills, I feel like I'm on a rally stage. I don't even mind these seats. I was worried I wouldn't fit in them. Feeding yourself in through the door is not the most dignified of things. And I can tell you that even though this is being run in, John's definitely been enjoying it. There are a lot of flies on this car. 
The side is absolutely pristine, immaculate. Looks like it was cleaned this morning. The front, it's like some sort of insect som. Here we go, this is a great little section. The car does move under you a lot. It's a real old school 911 tray. If you don't like it, you, you're gonna hate something like this, but if you're familiar with the way these cars feel, if you're happy for the car to choose its own line, oh, it's good. Oh, yep, tap the bottom there. Grip was actually pretty good, you know. The steering is just brilliant. Absolutely wonderful. This is a great car. I was so worried about it, because when I saw pictures of it, like I said, sometimes these are not very easy to drive. There you go, it's about five grand. That's all I'm gonna give it. But that's all I need, really. I'll be honest. I don't know how fast I'm going because the steering wheel obscures nearly all of the relevant bit of the speedo. I saw a little bit of it there. I hope that's KPH. This is not really a review, to be honest. This is more of a, of a showcase. I just want to tell you a little bit about something that somebody has made because no point reviewing something you can't buy, is there? And this really is magnificent. I know the Porsche world sometimes seems all a bit like the VW scene where people say everyone just likes the exact same thing. And the whole Magnus Walker, Outlaw type thing seems sometimes to me a little bit done to death. But honestly, when you drive a car like this, even though this isn't finished, this isn't done, the Geo's not right, there's loads of things that need doing on this car, but still, it's just sensational. And you experience this and you realize instantly why people are so in love with these old Porsches. John's a brave man letting a stranger out in his baby, especially in this state of its build, but I'm so grateful that he has. Brakes are so fearsome in round. Gearing being short is great because it means I can use the gears all that more often. And with every shift, I get a little bit more used to that box and a little bit happier with it. You get into a groove with this car so fast. Oh, this is pure driving adrenaline. Not everyone's into Porsches. Not every Porsche person's into 911s, although most of them are. And I'm sure there are plenty of people out there for whom this just carries no interest whatsoever. I would normally have been one of those people. Yeah, I'd look at it and go, yeah, it looks cool, but does it drive any good? Yeah, it's amazing. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed today's little video. A nice look at a really cool car. Thanks all for watching. Thanks to John for bringing it out. Please like, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.